You might wonder why these lines are dancing in this way. Heck, what's even going on? In this video, you'll learn how to produce these patterns. And if you're interested enough to stick till the end, you might just find me blabbering about why am I so obsessed with patterns at all. So yeah, back to the beginning. What you saw was just a function. That's it. Wait, I thought functions look like this. Yup, they do. But depending on how you visualize them, you can get pretty amazing results. Trust me, I myself was just blown away when I saw these things coming up for the first time. And I want you to have the same experience as I did. So I'll move on with my story. So one day I was pattern hunting and this old video of mine popped up. If you've watched this video, you'll know that it's about how the whole act of multiplying by a number represented in a circle can give these beautiful structures. But then it hit me. You can do a whole lot more than just multiplication to a number, right? What about division, trigonometric functions? What about a whole zoo of other functions you can apply? And this is how I lost my sanity for a few days. And I'll make sure you do too. So yeah. Here's a quick explainer on how to construct these amazing structures. As always, take a nice round circle. Divide it into 10 divisions. Now mark these points from 0 up to 9. What we have created now is a nice way to represent all real numbers. But how? There's only 0 up to 9 in here. How to represent a number which isn't even in here, like 13? Well the thing is, after 9, the next point should be 10. So this point isn't only 0, it's also 10. And in this way, you can find the points for 11, 12, 13, and so on. Okay, what about fractions? How would you find 2.5 in here? That's easy. 2.5 should be in the middle of 2 and 3. And this is how all real numbers can be found in this very circle. So what is this all about? The beautiful thing about this circle is, you can connect the inputs and the outputs of a function in the same figure. So for instance, let's take this function. The numbers we see in here will serve as our inputs. So now, we plug in the inputs to the function, which results in the corresponding outputs. And finally, we connect these inputs with their outputs, which gives us this diagram. But now the fun begins. What would this look like if we divided the circle into more divisions, say 400 divisions? Things start coming to life. The first time I saw this, I was getting emotional. But you know what the best part is? In this video, you'll get to explore more of these animations. Already fastened your mathematical seed bills? Here we go. Some ending comments. So far, we've seen how these patterns emerge, but we still haven't talked about the why. I guess you can say in mathematics, the how is the same as the why. But even then, for some reason, it feels like magic that some simple sets of rules can have so much more to them. This reminds me of the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot who, after discovering the Mandelbrot set, said that he never felt like he was inventing something new, saying they were there even though nobody has ever seen them before. 
I want to end this with a wonderful quote by the mathematician Stephen Strogatz. In mathematics, our freedom lies in the questions we ask and in how we pursue them, but not in the answers awaiting us. Thanks for watching.